If you're like me and prefer to stay manly and clean, then this next segment is for you. <laughs> How about we are going to learn to make some soap, homemade soap, and it's manly soap it's at that. It's very manly. We're here now with Gates Counselor, owner of Burley Stone Soap. <laughs> you have to say it like that, Gates. Burley. Uh, that's how I always say it, Burley Stone. Burley, Burley, yes. very cool. So this, this is very unique. You're, you're making manly soaps, and they're giant. And Look at how big they are. I mean, they when are, you go by way, homemade soap, you never see it cut like this. I mean. Big 10-ounce bars of soap. They are, and they smell it's, like man. Where did these ideas come from? Uh, I started by coming up with the name initially. We mm. would come up with what sort of person would like this sort of soap. So the dude, this is called we the came dude. up with the a dude. warm <laughs> scent. That's actually made with Guinness beer instead of water. And if you look at the unwrapped version, it's it made to look- It looks like a Guinness, right? Yeah. Does I'll it taste like that. a Guinness? No, don't, I, don't eat I wouldn't it. recommend don't, tasting uh, it. Okay, don't eat it. Okay. <laughs> Just smell. But it smells great. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm assuming there must have been a lot of trial and error until you got your recipe yes. down? Yes, yeah, there's tons of trial and error. You know, there's all sorts of uh, websites you can go to that have the formulas laid out for you. But it's really, every soap maker has their own particular formulas they've worked out, um, depending on if you want the soap to be bubbly or creamy lather, mm -hmm. if you want it to be really cleaning or more conditioning, uh, all different ways you can do it. Now talk about this last one here, because it's a really unique kind of This scent. is called the King of the Grill. We actually, it's not even on our online store yet uh, or available in any shops. Uh, but we're going to be premiering it at the Mohegan Sun it Barbecue smells Festival. Smoky, I see. It's got uh, bacon, bourbon, sandalwood, and uh, caramel fragrance oils in That's it. That's incredible. So it's a really unique scent. And I wanted it to look a little bit like it were freshly grilled. Sure, makes sense. Kind of looks like a burger. Exactly. <laughs> so, so how do you get the look of it? How do you? Make uh, you the use uh, some people use artificial colorants. I use all natural colorants. They're called uh, oxides. They're basically. Uh, rust oxides, things like that. So for the uh, King of the Grill, we used uh, a brick red oxide, activated charcoal, and titanium dioxide as our colorants. Mm. Great. Well, you're going to show us how to make some of this? Yes, absolutely. All so right. what we have here is our oil combination. This is olive oil, coconut, palm, sunflower, and castor oil. Okay. Um, so you basically, you heat all of this up until it's about 100 degrees, and you pour it into a safe container. And then separately, you have a mixture of lye and water. And Which is not the safest of liquids. Correct? No, highly caustic, so that's why I'm wearing gloves okay. because I don't want to burn myself or you guys for that matter. Oh, thank you. So um, nice you. And what you always do is you always pour the lye into the water, never the other way around because it's going to be really, really dangerous, okay. especially what, dangerous what, that way. What would happen? Um, it, the, it makes the lye more dangerous at the very start as opposed uh, to adding it into something safe. This, okay. this is like an episode of Breaking Bad or watching Fight when, Club. When I first started, I started in my <laughs> garage and the, the doors are open and I'm walking around with face masks and gloves on. I had the neighbors a little concerned. Yeah, they're like calling that. the police for a while. Yes, there. exactly. So then you pour the lye and water mixture into the oils. And I kid you not, this is now officially considered soap. Wow. Now, are you still making it in your garage, or do you? Uh, no, I, I'm hoping to move into a professional facility later this year, but right now I'm in my basement. You are. I've okay. taken over fully three quarters of a, of a, wow. of a full basement. So, so this is now officially soap, and what I'm going to do is make sure that stays. Now, what scent are you making now? Uh, this is called the Mariner. It's a combination of star anise essential oil, uh, bay laurel, juniper berry, and cedar wood. Okay. So this is about some of um, our favorites. Yes, <laughs> it's a really nice spicy scent. So you just pour that in. Just spin it around. Now there, mix it up. There's not many professional soap makers around, but you're one of the few here in Connecticut. I'm um, one of well, there's a bunch of soap makers, but we're, there is a national, an international guild, and I'm one of two in the state that's certified through the guild oh. uh, in safe handling, preparation, and uh, all of that. As to far the real as, deal. Yes, I think a lot exactly. of people do it as a hobby, but yeah. they probably don't get an opportunity to sell it or no, really exactly. come up with the, the and recipe. This is if we want, if you want to, you know, make it a little fancy, you can add a little bit of color. So this is uh, ultra ultra blue oxide. And uh, just put a little bit of that in with olive oil. Wow. And it gives it a little bit of color. And when you use your soap, what is it? Is it very bubbly? Does it Mine, moisturize? Uh, I worked out a really nice balance. So it's a little bit more of a creamy lather than a big bubbly lather. Mm -hmm. But it's also more nourishing to the skin, because of, um, mostly because of the amount of castor oil that I use. I use Smells about 7%. So Okay. And then all you do is pour it into your mold. Now the mold it looks like is homemade as well. Did uh, you no, this mold is professional. That? I oh. actually did have my molds professionally made for me by a special effects artist. Oh. Um, because if you look at it, the sides of it, it looks kind of like rough hewn stone. Sure. And when I have when I make them, I cut. Uh, this is actually part of an 18 inch long loaf of soap that I oh, make. Oh, okay. And then I cut it up. 
So then this is basically that soap is all made. All you do is wait 24 hours, you can unmold it, and then you let it cure for up to six weeks. Oh, what okay. happens then is it, the, the soap itself mellows out, the extra water evaporates, so it becomes a firmer, harder bar of soap that lasts longer. Mm. Fantastic. So no heating of it, you, you, you just let no, it sit. There's, there is another process called hot process. This is called cold process. Uh, hot process involves use, uh, cooking it in a crock pot, basically. Really? Where well, can we find your soaps? This is a great Father's Day yeah, gift, right? It's, it's Absolutely. Cool. Um, well, you can go to our online store, burleystone.com. We're available in about a dozen stores in Connecticut, Massachusetts, down in Washington, Farmers markets. Farmers <laughs> markets. We're going to be in the um, uh, which one, which one? Uh, Ledger Farmers Market, Denison Farmers Market, all summer long, New London Farmers Markets. And then I'm going to be at the Holmberg Orchards uh, Pop-Up Market uh, Sunday, May 24th. Mohegan Sun Barbecue Fest? Yes. That's going uh, to be big. That's going to be a big one. I'm looking forward to that one. Nice. So. That, that's where we get to try the bacon. The, the, king, of, the king of the grill, yeah. That's king of the cool. grill. Yeah. Well, this was really fun. Thank you so much no, for being here. No, thank you guys. I would shake your hands, but I'm a little sloppy right now. You have right lie now, on so. it. It's okay. Here, we'll, we'll elbow it. There you go. Blown it up. Very good.